I would really recommend just following your passion first. And just like, if anybody tries to stop you, that's your red flag. Like you're not being disrespectful by chasing what makes you passionate. You're listening to Femcanic Garage, the podcast that features women in the automotive and motorsports industries. A community that elevates, empowers, and evolves by smashing stereotypes and breaking down barriers for women. I'm your host, Jamie Blossman. Buckle up for the ride, Femcanics. Devin Hoffman is in the driver's seat today. Devin is a lead manufacturing engineer, technical writer, and race car driver. She grew up on an army base with her mom, where her love of cars all started. When she was in high school, Devin started volunteering at shops for free so she could learn how to work on cars. After graduating from college, Devin got her race license and was picked up by IAG Performance as a time attack driver. Devin currently works at GE Gas Turbine as a lead manufacturing engineer. She is also involved with community and helping others learn about engineering, racing, and car maintenance. Now let's sit back and enjoy the ride. Hello, Femcanics. This is Jamie B coming to you, and I have Devin Hoffman in the driver's seat today. How are you doing today, Devin? I am great. I am happy to see your face. I have coffee. This is going to be a good time. (laughs) I want to jump in and share who Devin is with the rest of the world uh, and the Femcanic community. So one of my favorite questions is, did you always know since you were a little girl that you wanted or that you knew that you were going to be in this industry? Yes, some way, shape, or form. Um, Definitely not how it panned out. Um, I always thought I was just going to be the weird engineer behind the scenes. Um, But I knew from the moment I first heard a 69 Judge and a bunch of other muscle cars in the barracks, I'm building those. I'm going to build those, and those things are awesome, and I'm going to make them fast. (laughs) So you said barracks. So tell tell me a little bit about that. So my mom and dad were in the army. Um, My whole family is an army family. So I'm an army brat. Um, And we'd move around a little bit. And then once my mom separated uh, from my dad, we, um, you know, she continued to date guys like in the military because that's who she had common with. Like she loved cars and guns too, where I got it from, (laughs) you know, and some of the guys she would date had like awesome cars in the barracks. Like, you know, they get back from deployment and all their deployment money goes into these awesome hot rods. And you would hear them all like meeting up in the parking lot, revving them up. And I was like, I'm probably like five at this time. And I'm like, what is that? That is awesome. And you hear like the lop of these muscle cars. I'm like, I love this. I don't know what it is, but I love it. (laughs) And so I would always get my mom to get me matchbox cars after that. And I was obsessed. (laughs) Horses and horsepower. I I had a problem. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Now, talk a little bit about the evolution. So when you're a little girl, you're just kind of drawn to it, right? Naturally. So how, how did your involvement kind of evolve as you grew up? So, you know, I just always thought they were cool. And I would just get the car magazines, like a weird fangirl of like, I was like, that's a cool car. I just keep getting all the stuff. And I was reading about them. And then I did like, I guess what you would call like a vision board thing. And I would just like put all the cars together, like my dream builds together. And I start putting them in like Excel sheets of like what I wanted to do. And then slowly, um, as I got older, I, um, did CAD CAM classes and um, this was like middle school, high school. And I was like, Oh shit, you know, I can actually like do stuff with these guys. And like my mom knew how to work on cars, but not to like the level to where I'm at now and you know how I progressed. And I didn't really have a dad to like show me these things. So I was like, shit. Okay. So I'm gonna start volunteering at shops. Cause I want to know how I could fit in this. And then I heard about a turbocharger. And at that point I was like, I'm in love. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. I'm like at that point in high school, I'm walking around with like engine blueprint books and turbocharger, how to build your own turbocharger books. And like, I'm going to my teacher like this. I'm like, this is what we're going to do. And he goes, sure, kid, whatever you say. And, and, no, he was awesome. Like I remember his name, Mr. Swartz. He was 
fucking awesome. He like believed in my weird little rants about like, I'm going to build these. This is going to happen. And he was like, okay, I believe in you. Here's all the tools you need. And so I just became like that weird kid that would always hang out with all like the weird car kids. Um, and I would like learn about their builds. I'd volunteer to sweep floors at shops so I could learn what the hell I was doing. Um, I participated in my first like build where I did a lot of stuff. It was a Subaru. We did um, an O2 WX into um, an O4 STI swap. Probably the dumbest thing, but most influential thing I've done because everything we thought we knew, we didn't know. Um, <laughs> you know, so I learned a lot from that. And then I also fell in love with Subarus at the time just because like the motors, like how they're set up, you know, like the boxer motors, like I'm in love with those. And it was the perfect mix between like a lop and a tuner car because of how like so I'm going to I'm going to pause like, you a second. I'm yeah. going to give you an opportunity to educate myself and my listeners. So you shared a lot of information there and I, I want to backpedal a little bit and just give everyone an opportunity to process. Yes. There's something that I loved about what you said and it's such a great message, but because you are who you are, Devin, you don't even think about it. That's the amazing thing about <laughs> the women that I interview is that it is so second nature to you that you don't even realize a lot of the special things that you did because it's just what you do. And let me call it out. You went and volunteered at shops so that you are in proximity to the people that are the experts or that have knowledge that you're seeking. And the reason why that is such a big deal, and I want people to really hone in on that, volunteer means you did not get paid. Nope. <laughs> you had an end state in mind, a goal in mind, and sometimes we have to be willing, willing to do what it takes to put ourselves in the proximity of the knowledge and information that we need, even if it means working for free. Because the knowledge you get from it has a value. Yes. Yes. Does that make sense? And yeah. you didn't even, did someone tell you to do that? Or it no. just like, no, you're like, I was just this like, is what I want to be around. Yeah. I was like, how do I learn? These people are doing it. Hi, I'm Devin. Here's what I want to do. Um, and it's kind of like what I've done my whole career. And it seems to work out so far. Um, but I'm just like, this is what I want to do. Can I like... I don't know. And I didn't know sweeping floors was an option. I was like, can I clean wheels? Can I do exhaust installs? I don't know how to do the easy shit. And he was like, nah, kid, you can sweep the floors and clean up the oil spills and stuff. And I was like, you got it. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> now you started to use some jargon, some industry mm -hmm. jargon there. Uh, help define what that is. So yeah, the CAD CAM is like the computer-aided drafting um, into the computer-aided machining. And as a lot of people think about it as manufacturing, like you would um, draw up a bracket. Like I did simple things for people for a while. I do license plates, brackets, anything that they needed so I could be involved. And I was like, I could do this <laughs> with my student license. <laughs> um, but um, you design that and then you either like water jet it, um, you know, CNC it like on the Haas or something like that. Um, What's water Just jetting? Water jet, you'll have a sheet of metal and it cuts out your little, um, your little three, like your little drawing, you know, your little 2D drawing. And like, you can like bend it and fab it. And it's, it's pretty awesome. Like it's, um, that's one of my first things I started with. And then I, then I went to um, the Haas's that we had at school, but we also had like the old ones where like you had to have a floppy drive. <laughs> I don't know if people even know what that is anymore, but you know, like the save icon, <laughs> that's like what I learned off of, you know, um, the, the Subaru for me, what got my attention was because I loved muscle cars, right? And I loved the sound of the lop. I kind of liked tuner cars. Um, What's the lop? Explain it. Oh my God. Can we play a noise? Can you like insert that noise? Like how just we like could. you just hear, you just hear like, I could make the car noise, but I think everybody would make this a gif. <laughs> but like uh, it just. Go it ahead. Just, give it a whirl. Try making the car noise. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, but it's just this angry, like, big, like, like muscle car. Like, you just hear it. It's just, like, idling, and it's just, it's just ready to, like, whoop your ass on the track or the street. You know what I mean? And it is, it is, it is absolutely incredible, you know? Um, 
and I know most people can tune it, but I think a lot of these cars, they just naturally, they just had it. They wasn't tuned in. Like they actually had the big cam upgrades and it was, it was heavenly. So then when I heard the Subaru, I was like, and I know people will probably not understand this, but I heard the, um, like the, the burble, the Subaru burble. And it comes from like the unequal header lengths that's on it. And the burble. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to make that one. <laughs> <laughs> so the burble is the noise. Yes. That's the what noise describe- you hear. Yeah. From the unequal header lengths and how like the, the motors, like the horizontal, you know. And to me, I was like, yo, you know, that's kind of like in the between. I can't afford these 69 or these judges or whatever I want, these Camaros and stuff. I like can't afford that, but a Subaru can kind of afford it. And it's really cool. It's turbo, you know, it's like still like JDM stuff, but it sounds like a more badass and not like racer. So for me, you know, I know a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? No, no, for me, it did because it resonated. And like, that's what sparked my interest. I was like, this is a happy medium. This is a happy medium. So what <laughs> happened after high school? Um, so then I wanted to, um, you know, I just kind of like wanted to figure out what I was going to do in college. I thought I wanted to be a mechanic. Um, so before I moved from Pennsylvania down to Georgia, um, where I found a school I wanted to go to, I tried it out and I was like, fuck that. Like, I don't want to work on your minivan that you don't change the oil on at all. I'm gonna go be an engineer. Like I'm done. You know, so I, you should have known your engineer mind soon as as a teenager, you were using Excel sheets. To organize <laughs> stuff. Like that should have been the first cue for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looking back now, I see this, like that was my thing, but, um, totally in your mind. <laughs> Um, yeah, so then I, I went to school for, um, I went to a tech school because I was kind of like, I didn't want to jump right into a bachelor's. I wasn't hundred percent sure on my career path. Um, I knew I wanted to do something with cars. I just didn't understand what yet. I, I knew a mechanic was not one of them. <laughs> I got to pause you and give you kudos here. I think that is one of the smartest decision decisions younger people can make. And by younger, I mean, you graduated high school. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to know what's next for you. Yeah. And a lot of times people, and I was one of them, are pushed into college. Yeah. And you, heck, ask some grown adults, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? Ask a 30 or 40 year old. And a lot of them will be like, I'm still figuring it out. Right. Because a job, a job is not the same thing as what you want to be when you grow up. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when you're 18, like who, honestly, seriously. And and then to invest in college, which is your first major, major expense Mm -hmm. as a person. And then if you don't pay for it all up front, you have student loans following you around afterwards. (laughs) Yes. What you did right there is go to a tech school to start figuring it out, I think is absolutely brilliant. And kids, I'll tell you, if your parents are pushing you, parents, you can call me personally, look up my number and yell at me if you want. Sometimes we have to give our kids space to mm-hmm. figure out what they like or don't like to set them up for long-term success rather than a bunch of student loan debt. Yes. Yep. I think that was brilliant, Devin. Thank you. Um, my mom, yeah, she never pushed me. She's like, you're going to you're going to go to college. You're going to figure out a job, something you want to do. Like she, I've always had a job. Like even when I was like 16 and stuff, I was working at like JC Penney's after school and then fitting the shop stuff in. It was always like, my mom taught me make yourself sustainable and have, have a, a, a foundation before you start fucking around. And I was like, cool. You know, so. what's your parting advice to other femme mechanics finding their way in the motorsports industry? I would say definitely go to therapy. Um, <laughs> No, <laughs> I mean, honestly, it keeps you, it keeps you accountable and it keeps you, um, 
I feel like it keeps me in check of myself and not believing the mean things my brain says sometimes. And, you know, also keep having your, your close network of people. You know, I think having a support system, whether it's just one person or your therapist, I don't know, (laughs) you know, having a support system that is helping you stay true to yourself, you know, make sure you're not taking on other people's shit advice or living for other people, you know, and making sure your self-esteem is coming from yourself and not others. You know, I'm a hypocrite. I'm learning this better factors. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like I, I've heard this thing that it was like, you know, if you're looking at other people, it was like, you know, you're looking in like a cracked mirror. You're not going to rearrange your face to fit that cracked mirror. And I was like, Oh yeah, that's true. Why would you do that? You know, (laughs) that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Devin Alexandria Hoffman. I am a driver and lead manufacturing engineer, and I'm a Femcanic. Hey, Femcanics, this is Jamie B. Thanks for listening to the preview. If you would like to listen to the complete interview, we provided two convenient links below that will link directly to this episode. These links take you to Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You can always go to your favorite podcast listening platform and search for Femcanic Garage. While you're there, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button and give us a rating. It helps the podcast reach more women. And just know, we appreciate you and your support. This is Jamie B. signing off. Are you a Femcanic?